Hello YouTube! I know some of you saw the Triumphal Coronation video and have been waiting for the Fragrant Orchid Project. I apologize for the delay. I suck. Okay, um, so a little backstory. When I first started learning to grow orchids, I didn't know that any of them had fragrance. And the first fragrant orchid I ever smelled was a Neostylus at a nursery in Hawaii. After that, I was totally hooked on fragrant orchids, and ever since then, I've been collecting information on all the fragrant orchids that I learn about or get to smell. One of the books that was really helpful to me was Fragrant Orchids by Stephen Frauwein. This book has lists in the back that are organized by different criteria, like bloom season, strength of fragrance, and most importantly, by light and temperature requirements. By the time I got the book, I'd already had several pages of handwritten notes, and they didn't all fit in the book. So a few years ago, I decided to enter all of this info on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, that, and by now, I have about 550 orchids on the list. And it's wonderful having it on the, ex on the Excel spreadsheet, because I can just click any button and organize it by light or temperature or whatever, and it makes shopping way, way easier. So uh, 550 sounds like a lot, but there are over 30,000 different orchid species, and that number doesn't even include the tens or hundreds of thousands of orchids that exist. And sometimes you get a totally different fragrance in a hybrid, like in that poofy slipper that smells like strawberry cream. And you'd think I'd be real happy with my list, but since fragrance is subjective, um, plants are sometimes misidentified, there is variation between individual plants, and since the author of the book had not personally smelled each of these orchids, not all of the descriptions are accurate. I've purchased orchids from the list in the book that didn't smell like the description, and after patiently waiting for them to bloom, I was really disappointed when they didn't smell how I thought they would. So I thought I might do this video in an effort to help you and me avoid the same disappointments that I've experienced and hopefully make the list even bigger and better. Since show season is here, I thought it would be the perfect time to put this video up. Until April 20th, I will be collecting information on fragrant orchids in the comment section. And then for every orchid that you guys list, I will list two with the information that I have and release it publicly in a video around the end of April. That will be in a public, that will be in a public video and it won't be the complete list. The complete list I will give to those of you who help out with the project. If you contribute directly and follow the rules <laughs> and provide at least 10 orchids with the information in the rules that, I, that I'll give you in a minute, if you send me a private message with your email address, I'll email you the list. I'll do this for everybody, whether they contribute before or after the deadline. So even if you don't see this video early on, you can still get the list. I'll be entering all of your contributions as they come in, and I'd prefer that you wait until after the deadline to request the list so it's more complete, but if you want it before the deadline, I can still send it out to you. Now, you're not limited to 10. All of the information that you provide will go on the list, and it will be your list too. So maybe you're going to an Orchid Society meeting, a show, or a, on a trip to a nursery, or to a botanical garden and there are plants there that smell good or bad <coughs> that you can't grow now or you don't have room for, if you send me that information, you'll have them all on the list for future reference. I also encourage you to list fragrant orchids you have now in case you lose one because it's pretty easy to forget that you even had the plant, so please just send in all that you can. Now, I know full well what it's like to not live in an orchid paradise. The nearest orchid society to me is two and a half hours away. So to be fair to those who aren't blessed with living in an or orchid area, or if you're just starting out, you can still contribute and get the whole list even if you don't have any real world experience. And I'll tell you how you can help later in the video. Okay, here are the rules. For everyone, list at least 10 fragrant orchids with the following information. And I'll give you some more uh, details in just a second. We need the plant name, the fragrance description, the strength of fragrance, and the light and temperature requirements, and the source of where you got the information from. So for the name, when you go to a show, meeting, etc., and you find a fragrant orchid, whether it's good or bad, write down the name. Just copy all of the information on the tag. 
If there's no variety, form, or clonal name written, or if you're not clear on what this is, just write down the color of the flowers. This might be important. Um, I think I found a pattern in some of the Cattleya Alliance where some plants lacking foliar anthocyanin may also lack fragrance. I have a range of orchids here. Um, that one's semi-alba. This one, it's white with a colored lip. The, uh, the Phalaenopsis up there is pink, or you can call that lavender. That one is just yellow with red spots. You know, it's, it's pretty simple to um, just basic color. We don't need a lot of, a lot of detail. And you don't need to worry about intricate markings like flares. So for the fragrance, this is one of the hardest things to describe, and a lot of orchids don't smell anything else. Oh my goodness. For the fragrance, <laughs> this is one of the hardest things to describe, and a lot of orchids don't smell like anything else we are familiar with. If I told you that my Sobenicopia robusta smells like tuberose but sweeter, but you've never smelled a tuberose, then you have no idea what that's like or if you'd like it. But if I told you that it's a sweet, smooth, white floral with a hint of citrus, you'd have a much better idea of whether you'd like it or not. Taste itself is directly linked to our sense of smell, so we can use words that describe foods to describe fragrances, like sweet, spicy, sour, tart, thick, smooth, thin, bitter, citrusy, fruity, etc. Fragrances are also the strongest sense to mem tied to memory, so we might use words that remind us of places, times, experiences, or materials that may include words like powdery, resinous, musty, antiseptic, earthy, piney, plastic, white floral, and spring floral. I will have a list of terms in the description box um, that you can use to describe the fragrance to start you off and give you sort of an idea of how you might convey the overall character of a fragrance if you can't actually name it. If you're not a professional perfumer, like me, I mean I'm not one. <laughs> A good way I've found to practice describing fragrance is by trying to describe flavors. So, like, I'll take a bite of some fruit or something, close my eyes, and try to use words that describe the flavor rather than naming it. You don't have to do this, of course, and I know most people aren't as obsessed by fragrance as I am, but if you do have trouble describing fragrance, this might be a helpful exercise for you. The next thing on the list we need is the strength of fragrance. We'll use a scale of very light, light, medium, strong, and very strong. Um, very light can be used if you have to stick your nose right in it and you can barely smell anything. Light if you have to stick your nose in it but can definitely smell it. Medium if you can smell it if from a few inches away. Strong if you can smell it from a foot or more away but it's fine to stick your nose into it and very strong if you can smell it more than a foot away and if you have to kind of back up when you stick your nose into it. Light and temperature requirements. If you know what they are, list them. If it's a species you don't know, you can go to a site like IOSPE and find out. Um, if you can find out, that's great. If not, just write unknown. They have little icons on that website like quarter sun, half sun, etc. and that's fine. You don't need to, you don't need, um, specific foot candle measurements. I mean, if you can get those, great, but if not, just, just do what you can. If it's your own personal plant and you have bloomed it more than once, um, if there are any cultural specifics that would help others, please list those. For example, some cattleyas need far more light than others, and sometimes we don't know exactly what the plants need until we've bloomed them more than once because orchids are slow to respond and can still bloom on the energy that they've saved up during the previous year. So you might bloom an orchid under lower light than it actually needs the first time, but it may not bloom again under the same light the next year. Okay, the source. List the source of your information, whether it be from personal experience or from an internet source. Um, <coughs> if it's, you know, per your personal experience, a book, or online source. I think I just said that, sorry. Time of day, this is optional, but some orchids have a very small window um, when they are fragrant. Like I just bloomed a Jumelia that is supposed to be night fragrant, but it's actually fragrant around 9 a.m. To, to noon. I will put a blank form in either the description box or and or in the comment section that you can use to copy and paste into the comment section. So you can just fill in the blanks with the required information to make it easier for you. 
And finally, for those of you who don't um, have access to 10 or more fragrant orchids, you can still get the whole list if by just doing a bit of research. Sources for info include online vendors, online message boards, sorry, don't ask the vendors. I mean, if you can find it on their website, great, but don't pester the vendors asking them, like, can you describe this? Um, online message boards, American Orchid Society webinars, and AOS articles. Go to the, you could go to the library and check out books on orchids and see if fragrance is mentioned in, in, in any of them. Um, if you're pretty new to orchids, I've got a list of genera in the description box that have many fragrance species in the genus. So you could go to IOSPE and find the species in that genus that have little perfume icons. Then you can just Google that species and see if anybody talks about the fragrance on a message board, for instance. That might give you a clue as to like how you can describe it. Um, this would also be the perfect excuse to join the American Orchid Society. If you're an AOS member, there is a huge collection of back issues available to you online. You can probably just read one issue and find mention of at least 10 fragrant orchids, especially in the older issues. If you are doing online research, to prevent everyone from researching the same sources, just leave a little comment um, before you do the research of what issue, video, etc. you're going to research so we don't have everyone using the same, or the same resources. So if you watch an AOS webinar, for example, just leave a quick comment that you're going to use that. So, Also, if you're researching, please don't just list all the fluffy Cattleya species. Since these are so common and so commonly grown, um, most are already on the list, so we have a lot of info on those orchids. And, uh, okay, that's everything. I, If you guys need any clarification, please leave me a comment and ask. Um, I really hope this works out. If it if it goes well, then I think I'll do it around the fall again. And uh, but I'm hoping. I don't know. I got a lot of you guys sounded pretty excited about it. So hopefully it's simple enough. And um, I don't know. If you're having a really really hard time finding information, let me know, and I'll, I might be able to point you to another resource that that could be helpful. Because I know there's a lot of a lot of things that I'm like, I know, I know those are fragrant orchids in that article, but I haven't read it yet. So, um, okay, thank you for watching. Happy growing, and I'm really, really looking forward to to uh, seeing how this turns out.